Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. I came to Wuhan to see for myself what it's really like. Now I'm still in honkers, but let me tell you, people here still mentally damaged by the nasty summer riots behave so viciously that I wish I had left already. Not to Wuhan perhaps, but anywhere else. After some news about Chinese mainland factories having to possibly reduce output or having trouble to uh, ship into Hong Kong some paper products because of the closed borders, those nasty Hong Kong housewives sent their Filipino helpers to raid every supermarket for toilet paper. I kid you not. If it was in Japan, for example, people would have reacted by buying an extra roll at best and try to consume less here in this city of plenty, which, irony of it all, after that anti-Chinese behavior, totally depends on China for most of its supplies, households will go out of their way to consume more or at least stock up and the hell with their fellow neighbors in need. I've seen plenty of maids and people walking around with kitchen paper after the stores ran out of toilet paper. And what exactly do they plan on doing with that? Clog skyscrapers pipes or throw them in the bin, creating a massive sanitary hazard either way? As usual, the Hong Kong government is totally paralyzed and unwilling to encourage its citizens and take proper measures. Let's listen at the end of the video to a great social commentator who is put on in his analysis. But first, and most dramatically, while we hear about quarantines in all corners of the world, in Wuhan the situation, as I told you yesterday, is far worse than we can even imagine. Here is a chilling video from a nurse on site that ties in with the numbers that had possibly leaked on the Tencent website. <laughs> Hello, I'm Yondan Latu at the South China Morning Post. I must confess I did not put on a face mask even at the height of the SARS pandemic of 2002 to 3 and obviously lived to tell the tale. But those were different days when the good people of Hong Kong rallied together to fight the ravages of severe acute respiratory syndrome in a heartwarming display of camaraderie, self-sacrifice and empathy for fellow human beings. Fast forward to 2020 and this is a changed city in a far uglier mood now. And no more Mr. Nice Guy after well over half a year of the revolution of our times that has brought out the worst in us. Now that we have a worrying new scourge upon our heads with the coronavirus epidemic that first emerged in the mainland Chinese city of Wuhan, it feels like the end of days once again. But this time it's even more depressing and distressing because of the nasty, toxic social atmosphere. For starters, the hostility that many Hong Kongers feel towards their compatriots from across the border further aggravated by the anti-China sentiment fueled by the revolution feeds right into the xenophobia that drives the blame game against mainlanders for contaminating the city. Anyone starting to think the anti-government campaign of 2019 was finally dying down was sadly mistaken. The movement against Beijing is not only alive and well, it has found new purpose and direction by conveniently shifting to the fight against the coronavirus. It's the same people shouting the same slogans with the same political agenda but they're now making it sound like they're fighting for the freedom of our health. It ties in nicely with vilifying mainlanders and treating them like lepers, an extension of which is the whole hullabaloo over shutting down all of this city's borders with mainland China. While Chief Executive Carrie Lam is insisting that large numbers of Hong Kongers themselves need to travel to and from the mainland every day. 
So how do you go about persuading her sadly indecisive and incompetent government to grow a spine? Employ the good old tactics of the revolution. That's why we have people throwing petrol bombs at police stations to enforce the message and planting bombs in public toilets and trains to spread fear and panic. Don't forget unhinged and hysterical behavior to oppose any move to set up quarantine facilities within the city for coronavirus patients and their close contacts because, you know, good luck to them and all, but not in my backyard. During SARS, a far deadlier but slower spreading disease, frontline doctors and medical professionals made great sacrifices to save lives. Now it's all about their feelings and politics and putting down the government. That's what this current strike by public hospital workers is all about, let's be honest. Absolutely irresponsible and reprehensible behavior by people whose pressing duty is to save lives, not to endanger them by refusing to treat patients needing immediate care at hospitals that are struggling to cope. Most public hospital doctors and nurses in this city remain at their posts, while others in the private sector have volunteered to help. They give us hope. But the ones who have betrayed their medical oath are still making an unwanted impact on already stretched healthcare services. Of course, much of the blame can rightly be placed on this government, which inspires no confidence after all the experience and lessons of SARS, still reacting to everything like a deer trapped in the headlights. So here we are now, with a shortage of face masks and panic buying as snaking queues form around shops, selling limited stocks for atrocious prices. And more of the belligerence and bad behavior that is the new normal these days, with aggressive customers abusing shopkeepers who can't meet demand. You don't have to wear those surgical face masks if you're not ill. They're primarily meant to stop you from spreading germs if you are. They do not make you immune to the coronavirus. And there's a higher chance of falling ill because of the time you spend exposed out there in those long queues, huffing and puffing among the masses, instead of social distancing and staying safe at home. Like I said, I don't have to put on a mask, really, but when in Rome, you don't want to start a riot by not wearing one. Thanks for watching.